Hi there, me, your friendly neighborhood humble stroke consultant. So this is going to be probably my last return to work video about my experience. So this is going to be return to work week eight. So <clears throat> as I mentioned, I had buggered up doing week seven that's currently uploading. Hopefully it works this time. So let's talk about my return to work week eight. So fun fact, I had my stroke eight months ago yesterday. Yesterday was the last day of my eight hour work week. My first eight hour work week since my stroke. My stroke was on June 21st, uh, approximately 10.30 ish in the morning. Um, so if this was eight months ago right now, uh, if memory serves, I was still on ICU waiting for tests to see how bad things could have been. Um, for those of you that are curious, I'll leave a link in the description below of Day One Freedom. That is a video I recorded um, of me getting out of the hospital to show friends and family that couldn't see or didn't call. It was a pretty frenetic experience at that point. So they could see that I'm, I'm alive. <laughs> Things were incredibly not good, but at least I'm alive. Um, I wasn't going to win any spelling bees at that point. So... I've just completed five eight-hour shifts in a row. Um, well, one exception, we'll get into that. So, this week was a challenge. Um, I finally realized I can't, as I mentioned in the week seven video, I can't muddle through with the noise or the, the headset that I was provided that's supposed to be noise canceling because it doesn't cancel anything out. Um, it muffles and amplifies, in fact. Um, which is worse. The best, the best description I have for someone that has never had a neurological disorder or deficit that involves uh, hearing, in my instance, take a room, take 150 to 200 radios, tune each radio to a different radio station, put each radio at a different volume setting. Now stand at the door try to listen to one station on one radio in that room. Good luck. That is what it's like for me after my stroke. I, in large, noisy environments, it is very difficult for me to filter out noise and focus on one specific noise. Um, so certain noises can be just, it just, it's grating. It's just debilitating. It's an accumulative effect. And unfortunately, that can spill over into how I walk. I get so overstimulated, walking becomes difficult. I get so overstimulated, my speech can be impacted. I get so overstimulated. So I've decided there's, there's no longer suffering silence and, and I'm gonna have to uh, get a doctor's note. So I see my doctor next week, I'm gonna get a note for a proper headset and that should resolve that, I'm hoping. Uh, I was kind of hoping over the two months I could just suck it up, get through it and sort of inoculate or vaccinate myself uh, and, and build up an immunity and a tolerance, but Unfortunately, that hasn't happened. Uh, I still have anomia. Um, in fact, yesterday, I'm on the first or second call of the day. I'm on the phone with a customer. No, it was the first call. And the caller was great. Don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with the customer, except the fact that he had five different issues. Um, all of them needed to be resolved. And, and we were successful in resolving them all. Um, but at some point during the call, I started to have word finding issues and I started to um, stutter a little bit. Right? So I had to tell him, like, listen, I, I have a neurological condition uh, which causes me to have communication deficits because I had a stroke. So I'm sorry that this is happening. And he was great with it. And I'm like, holy shit. Like, I, when it happens, I can't hide it. I, I, I can't hide it. Um, and you know what? I was actually quite surprised that the customer was that understanding, that accepting. I just, I was just, I'm playing with you. Listen, I have a, de I have a communication deficit because I have a neurological issue. The neurological issue is because of my stroke. I can't help this. <clears throat> and he was great with it. Got through the call. Uh, yesterday, I took... Uh, we have what's called voluntary time off or what's called SLU. 
Um, so I was able to request to not have to work the last three hours of my shift, and that was granted. I don't get paid for it, mind you, but I was just fucked up. So I, I was grateful that I got to go home early. Um, because at some point it might have been obvious that it wasn't a good day. Unfortunately, when I have a good day, you might never know I had a stroke. When I have a great day, you can never tell I had a stroke. When I'm having a bad day, it's unavoidable. I, I can't hide it. There's just no way I can hide it. Be it um, the way I walk, be it my body posture, be it trying to grab things. Um, sometimes it takes a couple grabs to figure out where that thing is in the world. Be it my communication deficits. So there are times where I can't hide how bad things are. And, and that's just a thing. So far, for the month of February, I'm on track to be in Quartel 1 again. I'm, I'm amazed. I'm, I'm legitimately amazed that I am in. I'm that I'm. I knew I would perform well when I got back to work. I knew it might take a lot of work to get there. But I'm actually quite surprised, and I'm happy. Don't get me wrong. I'm happy. Um, I'm actually quite surprised. I'm doing as well as I am. Um, I'll just leave it at that. I, I don't know what to say to that. Um, still have some difficulties at work. Um, there are still, still names I can't remember, right? And I'm just going to chalk that up to, I haven't had a conversation with you in six months and I've had a stroke, right? So if, if for whatever reason I have not been involved in a conversation with you in six months, right? Um, and nor have you bothered to take the effort and have a conversation with me in the last six months. I don't know your name. And that's just the reality. I don't remember your name. And it's not to be disrespectful to you. It's just, I don't know your name. That's as simple as it gets. Um, Luckily, I haven't had to say that to anyone lately, because I don't really care that I don't know your name. It's not that important to me. I'm over it. I've accepted the fact that I have a memory deficit. I've accepted the fact that for about the two, two and a half weeks before my stroke, I don't really remember that at all. I remember snippets of things. I, and, and those snippets are so few and far and fleeting, it's almost, almost shouldn't be trusted. Right. The, the two, two and a half weeks before my stroke, I don't remember. Right. And they're, they're, they're not little things. Like, I was sent to Toronto to help a call center out there. Don't remember it. I know I went to Toronto. Don't remember any of it. Um, I had a manager's interview to become a manager. Don't remember the interview. I had a feedback interview because I didn't get the position. Don't remember it. Um, you know, like, they're... So many things for about the first two, two and a half weeks to about the first week, week and a half after the stroke, unless I posted something on my Facebook account or someone reminds me of something, I, I don't remember it. It's just, that's just the reality. I don't remember. And that's not to be divisive or, or, or to be avoiding or any of that. It's just, I, I legitimately don't remember. Right. And unfortunately, that's not uncommon. Um, I've had to accept the fact, and this took time. So for those of you that are going back to work after a stroke, uh, if you've had a stroke, or a neurological deficit, like you've got a brain injury or some other form of neurological event, and I mentioned this in other videos, you are going to have memories without context. I know that, but I don't know how I know that. And then you're going to not, not trust yourself. You're going to have self-doubt because like, well, I know how I know other things, but why don't I know how I know that thing? And that is the right answer. Okay. But why is that the right answer? How do I know I know the right answer? So now you're afraid to answer questions because you don't know if your memory is effectively intact and you don't know if your memory can be trusted at times. And then you're going to have other events where you know you could do a thing. And I don't care what that thing is. Is it algebra? Tie your shoes. Um, troubleshoot 
um, in my case, um, a complex internet issue, right? Um, and you know you could do it three weeks ago, four weeks ago, five months ago, whatever the case may be. You know that was in your skill set, that was firmly in your wheelhouse, and you had the toolbox to deal with it. And now you're like, meh. Just accept the fact that, and this was a hard thing for me to learn. Just accept the fact that what you know you know, what you know is correct, is correct. What you're not sure about, ask questions. And what you know you don't know, don't fake it. Right? Just... <laughs> Because if you fake it, you're going to lose credibility eventually because now you're just making shit up and the stroke can't cover that. For stuff that you're not sure about, ask questions. It'll confirm your memories. Right? And then for the stuff that you know, but you don't have the context, just accept the fact that you know something. Just accept the fact you still have some ability to do the job that you used to be able to do. Okay? Um, and eventually you'll rebuild your operational memory when it comes to being able to do your job. Now, the only thing I have is a little bit of a pet peeve. Um, and this isn't directed at anyone in specific. It isn't directed specifically at people at my workplace. Um, I almost have to amputate my tongue on a daily basis at times, if not weekly, when people try to tell me they know what I'm going through. When people try to tell me exactly how I should feel. When people try to tell me that they went through something similar. They don't have a neurological disorder. Right? So, when the air horn went off, I talked to a friend about it. Oh, I know exactly what you mean. I totally understand that. I'm like, no, you don't. Sure. I'm like, no, you don't. Yeah, yeah, no. I'm like, do you have a neurological... And I, I had to be blunt about it. Do you have a neurological sensory deficit? No, exactly. They're like, oh. Right. I, I get that social convention dictates you are going to attempt to play like you mean well. I get that you want to find a way to empathize. I understand you're looking for a way to effectively to contribute or be involved in that conversation. For people that want to try to tell me, or anyone that's had a stroke, oh, I know what you're going through. You, and if I know that you have not had a stroke, a brain injury, or some other form of neurological sensory deficit disorder, I'm going to ignore what you say after that. Because unless you have had a brain injury, be it acquired or traumatic, be it a stroke or some other neurological sensory deficit disorder where you are impacted in a similar fashion that I am, you have no clue what I go through. Right? What would be better said would be, I can understand how frustrating that would be. I can understand how difficult that must have been for you. Right? Meaning, I'm empathizing with you then the next thing you should probably say is, what can I do to help make it better? That would just be my advice. Right? Um, I might actually have to do a video about I need to amputate my tongue. I might. <clears throat> but on that note, this is week eight, return to work. Completed almost the entirety of five eight-hour shifts. I didn't leave work. I stayed at work the entire day. I was extremely tired, extremely tired. Um, I think I slept almost every night when I came home. I took a nap, had to, just didn't have a choice. Um, eventually my body will learn to tolerate it. Again, it's like, it's like building up tolerance, right? Um, eventually my body will consider going to the gym. Yeah, very similar to, to going to the gym. So when you first went to the gym, trying to lift a certain size weight at all, if not even 10 times, would be difficult. But as you do it more often and you build up your sets and reps and sets and reps and sets and reps, you now be able to go from I can do 10 to I can do 15. And then I can do 
Well, now I can do 15 of that weight. I'm going to bump it up 10 pounds, right? And consider it sort of like that. That's the only thing I have to say about that. So eventually my body will get to a position where it likes what I'm doing and it will tolerate more of it. Until then, I have to wait. But on that note, I'm going to let you find people go away. So if you've been watching my channel, and it's now been, as of yesterday, eight months since my stroke. So if you've been watching my channel for the last eight months plus one day, and you've been enjoying the content, please like, share, subscribe. Hit the little notification dingy 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 bell. Um, and so you can get notifications when the videos get released. Um, if you happen to have had a stroke yourself or you're supporting someone through their journey of their post-stroke world, please like, share, subscribe, point the channel to them. They might get some benefit out of it. If there's a topic you would like to see me cover, you can either leave a comment in the comments down below or you can email me directly at strokeassaulter at gmail.com. I say again, you can email me directly at strokeassaulter at gmail.com. Um, if you ask for anonymity, I'll give it. If you don't ask for anonymity, I will assume it's okay to publicly announce who you are and the request you've made. <clears throat> and then at that point, if you either happen to see in yourself or someone around you the signs or symptoms of a stroke, such as someone who immediately appears befuddled or confused, someone that can't maintain their balance, um, someone who has vision problems, they can't see out of one eye, they can't see to both eyes on the left-hand side, they only see out of a small part of the world, they see in grayscale, they can't see in color, uh, they have facial droop, they can't raise both arms equally effectively or at all, um, they can't smile equally effectively or, or at all, they have slurred, stuttering speech, inappropriate word usage for situation or context, they have general body weakness, weakness on one side, or the inability to stand unaided, please immediately place that person in a position of comfort and dial 911. Something so simple can save a life.